I'm Jonathan Betzler and I'm back with another segment of Film Revision, our year-long discussion of films from 1983. Now today's film has a bit of interesting history. It was originally uh, made exclusively for broadcasts on PBS, but the folks at American Playhouse, when they saw the final product, felt like they had something special and they got Paramount to uh, distribute it for a limited theatrical release. Now despite a poor box office showing, uh, the film did spark a lot of national conversation as well as uh, an Oscar nomination for its star. Uh, the film is Testament, and the guests are Brett Goldstein, a casting director from the East Village here in New York, and also Sonny Sarker, a consultant from Brooklyn. I'm fascinated to know what you guys have to say about this film. <laughs> I'm scared of what Brett has to say, so I'm going to start with Mr. Sarker over here. What have you got? It's a good film. I've never really thought about post-Holocaust and what happens to a family, but... Well, uh, I, I, you know, that's that, I think that's a time period thing. I think that's, you know, part of what dates the film to some degree is it was a real fear. Yeah, fair enough, because the Cold War didn't, I mean, I wasn't really, I didn't grow up in the Cold War because I grew up in India while the Cold War was happening, so it was kind of warm for us. <laughs> and uh, in terms of, <laughs> on a bunch of different levels, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, when we got here, you know, the, the Berlin Wall had fallen and things like that, so um, I, I hadn't really actually just ever thought of that, so. All right, Brett Goldstein, what, what do you have to say? I didn't get flash dance. <laughs> so fuck you. Number one. Number two. Not everybody can do flash dance. I mean, they buried their neighbors, but yeah. nuclear holocaust, Jonathan. <clears throat> well, I mean, it was, an, you know, it's an important film from the period. But who goes to see shit like that? Though? Because then it's like, nuclear holocaust, everybody dies. Oh my God, this is depressing. Everyone's sick and their hair is falling out. That was an entertaining evening. Yeah, well, it didn't, we uh, it didn't pull his punches, did it? It was a bitter pill to swallow. It was a bitter pill to swallow, and I wanted Mr. Ma. <laughs> <laughs> like this. That's good. Jane Alexander was was pretty brill. Yeah, no, yeah. she's. Uh, it's a good performance. I think on the whole, I, a lot of the performances are strong. I think the kids are really great. Brad, in particular, was fabulous. Oh yeah. I want to talk about the politics of the film. A couple things that were interesting about it to me. Uh, this is sort of what uh, you mentioned the Cold War right off the bat, but they never mentioned a villain. There was absolutely no villain in the right. film. No, that, you're right. That actually kind of sorry. Yeah, no, finish. No, that actually kind of struck me because in the beginning of the movie they were talking about whether or not it was terrorists or the Russians or some other groups. But yeah, you're right. They didn't really point to any conflict. It was just purely about the family and how they dealt with the aftermath of it. They get right to it. There's like you know these eight or nine minutes of Spielbergian suburbia. You know, very you know sort of detached look at this is what life is like, and then boom. We're in bomb territory, and from there on out, it's downhill. Like it's a very unusual structure. It's not a three-act structure. I mean, like it was just like, uh, this is what life is like. Bomb hits, everything falls apart. Right, mm -hmm. right. And and there is no, there's no hope. You expect the father to return. Mm -hmm. Something's going to happen, yeah. but no. But the, the whole, the whole fear of like of of, of something nuclear and big mm -hmm. happening. In my mind, it was like somebody pushes a button. And, and everyone's gone. Mm -hmm. It just they, everyone gets annihilated. Not the slow, the slow burn. Yeah. Right. It's like okay, well, it hit the, it hit in San Francisco. It didn't hit north of that or mm -hmm. wherever. So isn't everyone okay? And like it took me a while to get into the film and understand. Oh no, like they're gonna die no matter what. Well, I mean, it it had a limited perspective, but it was a choice they made to say, we are going to put you in this household of Jane Alexander's household. Right. And you are not gonna have any additional information than she has. And I mean, like, I think that adds to the, the fear. Like, they didn't really come about and, like, smack you over the face with, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of things, even, like, how Brad kind of developed into, like, you know, a little bit more responsibility where he's climbing hills every, you know, day instead of, you know, uh, wussing out or getting tired in the middle of the hill. You know, he was, like, kind of growing up right in front of our eyes, and it was very subtle. They didn't, in the end, they did have a victory. Like, most movies have a victory in the end where you kind of come away with the good feelings that they didn't commit suicide. And instead, they kind of celebrated... And that was like their little victory, you know, and then I thought that was good because yeah, it was very subtle. I don't cry a lot, but I will say that uh, there, were more, there was more than one occasion that this movie had me, you know, sobbing. Right. Wow, you're a little bitch. I guess so. You're so sensitive. Too. I, I'm not usually that sensitive, I swear, but I feel like it, it, it was a sucker punch. Yeah. Um, and it profoundly affected my heart. Um, is there any scene that, that made you feel something aside from angry? Rod Hiroshi. Oh yeah, You're going, I'm taking you home, honey. Little That's a good one. Japanese yeah. boy. That was nice, and even, even that was very subtle because I, at first, when I first saw it, I, I was I was like, you know what? They they kind of overacted the scene, right? But then I realized, like earlier in the movie, 
his father had made a point to kind of invite Hiroshi and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, add him into the See, he's not a dick William family. Devane. Like a, but he did, but he did in a creepy William Devane kind of way. But <laughs> 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 and when Brad did the same thing, Brad did it in his own way, trying to be like what his dad would have done in a similar That's context. Fabulous. And it was like kind of, you know, like mechanical and wasn't really normal, which was good. You know, it was very subtle. I like that too. The scene that got me is when the daughter, who's not, was not the strongest of the kids as an mm -hmm. actor, but she asked her mom what sex is like because she knew she was never going to have it. Yeah. Uh, that was like, it was, it was uh, unusual at first, but then like, when, you know, when the, the deeper meaning behind the scenes started to sink in, I was just like, wow. I mean, because she's so young and she's like, she's adjusted to the fact, knowing that she's going to die and wondering what is, I will never get to have sex. And you yeah. so wanted to show her what having sex would be like. <laughs> I could you help you with that! that. <laughs> but she didn't really die. <laughs> I could <can> help you! <laughs> Come here! <laughs> There's a lot of amateurism, amateurness about it. Like uh, the journal I th thought was a really poor device. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, like, like the voiceover, you know, voice like overs, the yeah. voiceover, the TV, like it, it, you know, there are moments that felt like TV movie, like the Kevin Costner and Rebecca De Mornay moments. I feel like, and also that scene in the church where everybody's like, rah, 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 you know, any, you know, any scene where Jane Alexander is not featured <laughs> right. sometimes okay. feels a little, or Brad, when, when the two of them are, aren't on camera it, or, or aren't featured in the scene, it, it, the movie tends to slow up. I think for me, the acting was pretty broad, so mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, I agree with you on that. All right, I'm going to close things up. Closing thoughts. Anything? Sunny? I thought it was inspirational. I know you guys probably disagree with me, but I thought it went, it, there was a lot of bad, obviously, that happened in the movie. There was a lot of body bags. A lot of people went bad. But um, you saw one Brad kind of become a man, right, mm -hmm. in the traditional sense, like powerful, kind of, you know, protective. He fought off the little goon, fat guy that, you know, he didn't fight off earlier in the movie. It's kind of subtle, right? And also the mom, you know, and Hiroshi, they kind of banded together, formed a new family. Um, very happy celebration at the end, you know, and she mentions at the end, you know, the, we got to remember the good and the bad, which is something you got to have to remember pretty much, you know, all the time. There's really bad situations and something good does come out of it. You know, a little more sex. So it, she, better. she didn't kiss that, that, <laughs> that angry father guy. Like, she made out heavily with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think they were trying to get frisky in the yeah. earlier part of the movie. Jane Alexander should have done somebody. Jane Alexander is not working enough. That's another thing, right? You know, mm -hmm. right? she's in something. Tell me you love me. I she love you. On. Aww. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't she the? She's like she was the star of Tell Me You Love Me. What is that? That's that HBO show that there was a lot of fucking and it was very popular. Oh, she she's she, I saw her recently. She was on Real Thirteen on in Sunshine State. She was one of the Sunshine mm, State. Number of people that were in Sunshine State. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm afraid it's time to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I have to close things up. But thanks very much to Brett and Sonny for coming by today. Um, we are always looking for intelligent people like Brett and Sonny to come here and discuss films with us, or quasi-intelligent people like Brett and Sonny to come <laughs> here and discuss discuss films with us. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a guest on Film Revision. Um, shoot us an email at info at myriadarts.net. You don't need to be uh, a genius. You don't need to be an artist or a film expert. If you like movies and watch movies, we'd love to have you and talk about movies. Um, if you do like movies, I imagine you also have heard of Real 13 here in New York City, um, which this week features Van Johnson training Japanese-American soldiers in the film Go For Broke. After the classic will be the short that you always choose on real13.org. And finally, um, David Cronenberg's trippy uh, indie spider with Ray Fiennes as a disturbed, uh, freaky little mental patient guy. Um, next week on Film Revision, we're going to shift gears a little bit and get do a little bit lighter fare with the fun comedy Mr. Mom. So tune in for that. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon.